safety guaranteed by AI, eco-friendly electric engines and stress-free autonomous traffic systems. Relaxing like you're on the couch whilst getting from A to B. Is that really the future of mobility? Today on Shift. Obviously, we'll need extremely reliable AI systems to be safe in autonomous traffic, and they still have a lot left to learn. But how does it actually work? More on that later. But we too have a lot to get used to, like using thoughts to control a car. The current Mercedes-Benz concept car doesn't even have a steering wheel anymore. Control concepts of the future are becoming more intuitive and innovative. You won't have to think about steering anymore. It will be self-explanatory. Like in this car, we're working on brain-computer interface technology, which means we measure neural activity. We gather brain waves and use machine learning to filter them. Then we can analyze them and filter out characteristic signals which are translated into computer commands. The brain-computer interface can read electric signals sent from the nerve cells when there's an intent to act. Japanese car company Nissan has also spent years researching the interface between brain and vehicle. This research focuses on the machine having a head start of a few milliseconds over a person intending to break or turn. This tiny head start could be decisive in preventing accidents. In traffic, centimeters can be crucial. That's also true for autonomous driving. Accidents, even fatal ones, can happen here too. But there haven't been any reliable studies on the issue so far. One thing is clear. The AI systems need to keep learning. And virtual simulations can help with that. Like those created by NVIDIA, known for the powerful graphics cards. This car is driving itself along the highway to Stuttgart. It recognizes other cars, road signs and pedestrians, and can decide to switch lanes autonomously. But just virtually in this case. It's a simulation created by chip manufacturer NVIDIA. Hey Mercedes, go park yourself. The US company's open platform Omniverse creates virtual worlds to train autonomous cars. Software designer Danny Shapiro says the virtual training ground is the missing piece of the puzzle for current AI systems to become completely autonomous. Like the lane departure warning system. One of the key advantages of using simulation is that we can create dangerous and hazardous scenarios that you would never want to test in the real world. There are so many things that can go wrong when people are driving cars and there's no way to anticipate or experience all that when you're driving actual test vehicles. So in simulation, we can create all kinds of different types of scenarios, different weather, different traffic, and repeat it over and over and over so we can really test exhaustively everything that could go wrong. The idea is that autonomous cars learn to handle traffic situations virtually before driving on the real highway. This optimizes the deep neural networks without the cars having to drive thousands of kilometers. An example would be, how do you create a vehicle that can recognize a stop sign? The old way of doing it was to write software that would detect something red and it would have a white edge. Instead, with artificial intelligence, we create the algorithms by training. So we feed the deep neural network that we're building pictures of stop signs, hundreds of thousands of pictures, and they could be taken at all different times of day or night from all different angles, sometimes being covered by shrubs or trees. And the system then develops an understanding of what a stop sign is. The AI trains using deep learning, meaning a neural network can take already available information and apply it to new, constantly changing conditions. The AI processes data from cameras, sensors, and radars in real time, and compares it to patterns it's already learned to keep itself safe. Hey Mercedes, pick me up. With sufficient computing power, autonomous cars are expected to collect enough data in the virtual world to be able to handle the real world. AI learning to drive safely in virtual reality, wow. In real life, there are five categories for self-driving cars. Level five means this car can handle any situation and weather condition without a driver. 
current lane departure warning systems and parking sensors barely make level mm -hmm. two. A level three vehicle can drive on the highway without a driver. Coming soon in Germany, the all-new Mercedes EQS will meet this level, but only in slow traffic up to 60 km per hour. Still, this requires a lot of computing power. Companies like ZF from Friedrichshafen provide the necessary car computers. It's really impressive to see what an AI supercomputer can do. Finding a space. Parking. Being able to react and brake quickly and correctly in busy traffic. Autonomous cars will be able to do all this with the help of computer systems, like the ZF Pro AI. Pro AI is a central computer, which contains a so-called system-on-chip at its core. This high-performance chip, produced by our partner NVIDIA, uses parallel processing and can process sensor signals in real time. It then uses them to work out what the appropriate response is, depending on the traffic situation it has to respond to. One example, stop and go traffic on the highway. The AI controls all of the vehicle's actions from inside this little box. It has the computing power of up to one quadrillion calculations per second. By comparison, a human brain is capable of one trillion calculations per second. For autonomous vehicles, the strength of the computer will be more important than the engine. Computers and chips are getting faster from year to year. Computing power won't be a problem for long. I wonder if the technology is changing so much, will the design and use of vehicles change too? When cars become autonomous vehicles, electric cars driven by artificial intelligence, their appearance can completely change too. For a hundred years, car design has been dominated by one characteristic element, the huge engine. The mechanics were what made the car, and people just sat at the controls on the left or the right. E-mobility means we can use the shape and space we move in freely. These new vehicles still have wheels and a floor, but the bodywork could be tailored to the passenger's needs. And driven autonomously, these cars could open up completely new ways of traveling. There may be vehicles that are focused on providing entertainment um, for the passengers, maybe more screens so people could video conference while on the road, or play games, or watch movies. We'll see vehicles that are designed for people to sleep. Maybe there'll be an overnight travel from San Francisco to Los Angeles. Um, and we'll see other types of vehicles used for delivery. So there might be a modularity to these vehicles. With so many possibilities, having your own car could soon be unnecessary, at least in big cities and metropolitan areas. To reduce traffic jams, shared mobility concepts are being tested. Like in Shenzhen, China, that's had completely driverless taxis since 2021. The Auto X taxi fleet covers the entire city. Amazing. Not quite at that level in Germany's Hamburg, the electric minibus heat cruises through the city at 25 km an hour. Many of these projects currently still have backup drivers on board, but shared mobility will become more flexible and convenient pretty soon. In the autonomous future, I'll be a passenger, not a driver. I won't have as much control, but I won't need to pay too much attention either. That's the AI's job. Current assistance systems aren't quite there yet. You tell a sat-nav where to go and it tells you the way. But artificial intelligence already knows where to go. The car can drive to the mechanic on its own because it detects there's a problem. It can realize you're tired and drive you home. It's a lot of responsibility we're handing over. Artificial intelligence will decide for you. But if this is the case, who's responsible for an accident? The manufacturer, the programmer or the passenger? Issues like this need to be addressed before society accepts autonomous vehicles. Business psychologist Florian Kutzner studies what we think about AI on the road. Are we asking the right questions? All these discussions on liability and ethical issues and so on, that's just a tiny part of it. The liability questions can be solved, it just needs to be done. And the ethical issues almost never come up. 
But it's a major talking point. For example, how does AI choose between hitting a truck rather than a cyclist who might die? And is that even relevant? Would humans intuitively make the right decision? Scientists say these are the wrong questions. What about other issues that people might have, like data security or the ecological implications of autonomous driving systems? Once you ask these questions, you realize that they too are relevant in the acceptance of these systems. Autonomous mobility requires terabytes of data. And it's not just data on your movements. Modern vehicles already use up to 400 sensors. Sensors on the seat belts can tell how many seats are being used. Who has access to this data? Is it just the car manufacturers? Or perhaps insurance companies and law enforcement as well? The environmental impact of future mobility is rarely addressed. Most concepts for the future are based on cleaner e-mobility. But will artificial intelligence really lead to less cars in cities? The simulation studies that have been done so far are quite shocking. You'll have empty cars driving around to save on parking costs, or because they can't find a parking space. And when you have autonomous driving systems, people are more likely to use a car. That will have dramatic consequences for the environment and urban planning. So even if AI could soon enable autonomous driving, we better start talking about the downsides. Just replacing all current cars with autonomous cars wouldn't really improve the carbon footprint or our quality of life. Still, sharing concepts and traffic control using artificial intelligence have huge potential. It's now about using these technologies sensibly and effectively. What do you think? Do you love having your own car or would you prefer smart sharing? Let us know. That's all for today. See you next time. Bye.